and we are live so uh, sorry about the mix-ups today with the links and everything i'll get it better next time i hope um let's see i'm your host victor uh, today Irina won't be joining us unfortunately so i'm all alone i hope i can handle myself right um, we are already past the warm-up if anyone else joins they'll join while we're going through this if not they'll have the recording on youtube and we'll go through five minutes of about me but not that much today because i think we all know each other pretty well uh, 20 minutes about guiding the player this time i prepared something pretty special and i really hope it will work and 10 minutes q a and then at the end the usual 15 minutes of something special for those of you who aren't at your first webinar here so uh, the rules as always please be polite uh, asking questions in chat and i will uh, answer them usually during q a although i kind of interact like all the time with you guys uh, thank you very much for joining of course and if something is broken try to reconnect like some of you already did when trying to join the webinar okay so uh, audio is good um, you can see me you can hear me so no more fuss about it let's get to it uh, why am i doing this uh, of course because uh, i'm already working on a level design course and i'm trying to get you all in the mood for uh, level designing with me on this course uh, advertising my indiegogo campaign as well but also because i have rarely seen people talking about level design uh, in general it's one of the most niche and mysterious um, disciplines in the game development family so i'm an expert level designer i have 12 years of experience as a professional level designer lead level designer technical director for level design and even as a producer on fifa but that's for another webinar uh, worked on several not to say a lot of triple a titles and um, i also all the games i've worked on or most of the games i've worked on were published on multi-platform consoles and surprisingly they weren't all using the same engine be it unity or unreal they were using various engines be them in-house or commercial so uh, we're gonna go live into this whole uh, guiding the player thing um so i just want to make sure if you guys can see the slide with guiding the player if anyone can type in there something anything and then we'll get right into the whole process of how we guide the player so Testing, testing, one, two, three. Salutare, Lucian. Okay, Aldiab confirms he can see the slide with guiding the player. So now, with the magical powers of alt tabbing, I'll just get here so uh here's what i did and this is a real engine itself i hope you guys can uh, see well enough through it i took a basic maze um, a basic maze with the um, all its rooms all its uh, side rooms and the solution uh, red is the solution of course and um, the rest is pretty obvious i've mapped the maze texture onto a cube as you can see and i want to build the maze yes bogdan thank you very much i should work on fps 
Honestly, I think it's because of the webinar software itself. So that's another reason why I'm also uploading this on YouTube and trying to um, put everything in a Udemy course because there you can stream from a better server. So uh, everyone can see the example maze and I chose a maze especially because it's one of the hardest things to do in uh, first person to make a player feel comfortable going through a maze and uh, not to frustrate him by having to try all uh, the rooms and all the options. Okay. So after I've taken this uh, maze picture, I've built on top of it the actual maze. Looks pretty simple, it, because it is. So there shouldn't be any mysteries here either. And this is how it goes. So I'll just hit play. And of course it's in the other window. My bad. Let's see if I can get it in the right window now. So I'll just put this on. I'll just put this on blueprint. There we go. And I'll just put these two in always loaded okay i'll hit play again there we go and i'll bring this window here sorry about that so the maze as you can see i start in it and i just navigate through it okay this is, by the way, the gray box I'm talking about. Very low FPS. I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, I'll just guide you through it anyway. Uh, not that much to show like interactive, etc. It's all about the example. So, I want to turn off motion blur. Yes, that's a great idea, because you're probably getting the frames with motion blur on them. Or I will just stay in stationary points all the time. Um, so, um, decision point number one. The player here can go either left or right, and in this gray box proposal there is no way we can tell uh, there's no way we can tell as a player which is the correct one. So, of course, the logic would be uh, just let the player figure it out. But usually, when we do that, players tend to get frustrated and quit our game or quit the map. Okay? Again, there will be some blurry and choppiness, but don't worry about it. It's not necessarily about how I walk through a corridor. It's about these decision points. So bear with me, we reach here another decision. Um, again, the player wouldn't know if left or right is correct. You can already see on the left side, uh, there is a bit of red there, because uh, you'll see later on how I add in some lights on a final meshed level, just to guide the player by the lights. Um, just remember, again, this is decision 2, I'll actually copy the text in the final uh, labyrinth meshed world. Yes, of course, at the up, left does look more interesting. So I'll just take the left, there we go. This is again about guiding the player with lights. Here's another one. Another classical uh, decision, again, I'm using lights to guide the player. Uh, this one is completely flat, you have a wall in front of you and two doors that open at uh, 90 degrees left and right. So Aldiab, of course, we both know what you're gonna say about it. Decision 3, right looks more interesting. Again, because I added, yeah, <laughs> because I added lights. 
I'll go through it again. Here we have a bit more lights. Here's another kind of uh, decision style. So in this one, I've got one closer to me, one further from me, and which one do I choose? Uh, or obviously, I would be tempted anyway to choose the one closest to me, but as you'll see in the next one, that's not always the case. So again, slap some lights on and it's good. Okay, here's another one which is, as I said, the opposite of uh, decision four. <laughs> Good one, CTV. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. So once I show you the meshes, maybe I'll convince you. Uh, we do have, a, we are holding a rifle, so there shouldn't be much danger here. Mm, decision 5. Uh, the one immediate to the player on his right isn't the one I'd like him to go through. It's the one on the left, exactly. So let's live dangerously, take the left again, we'll follow the lights. Now here's another one. Uh, the text is clipping a bit, but it's saying multi-choice. So I have multiple rooms. Um, which could be accessible, so I don't know which one to take. However, I did put some lights in the end. I'll strafe a bit on this side. You see some white light there where the crosshair is. But in this case, it might not be enough. Excellent. I'm glad you like games with choices. Uh, this time, again, I'll just pretend I know exactly what I'm doing as a player and go this way because that's the behavior I want. And sorry again for the low FPS. Yet another decision. Um, I have another branch here. I could go to the right or I could go to the left. This one would be a bit harder to fix only with lights. That, that's where the landmarking and maybe the looting steps in. Uh, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about when we switch to the mesh version. Okay. Let me just show you the solution. And this one, which is the exit of the maze, again, powerfully highlighted with lights. However, if we look at the whole options, you can see I have three of them and only one is perfectly lit. However, this one isn't yet that obvious as well, because if I stay here with the player, we all know now we have the lights on the left side. However, if I stay just here with the player, I might not see the lights. Again, the final art won't be blocky maze, at least for the example I'm doing now, but it should be there anyway. So let's see what we can do to improve this. Now, let me just switch to the final mesh variant of the level and I'll show you exactly what I did there. Again, this is a pretty basic example. Uh, we'll go into much more detail during the course. First of all, we'll have more time, better FPS, and probably more level design savvy people anyway. So let me just copy the text. There we go. I shall move this to my meshed level, bam, bam, in a second level, um, <laughs> level, see, looks like I can't necessarily move it, not a problem, I can easily Copy it anyway. There we go. Okay. Okay. Always loaded. Any moment now. Any moment now. 
whoopsie. Okay. Okay, so for some reason I can't move the debug text from the persistent level right now and I don't want to insist too much on this. Let me just change the streaming method on this to blueprint. Change streaming method to blueprint. Let's see if it got it right. There we go. And theoretically, now when I press play, we let the HDR kick in. You guys can still see the maze. It might be a bit too dark, but I'm hoping you can still see it. So yay or nay if you see it or not. If not, I'll bump up the lights real quick. Okay. So nice. So it's the same maze layout, the same choices, only this time with meshes and a bit of uh, nighttime uh, lighting. Why I went with uh, nighttime is for the sake of the example, it's much, much uh, easier to understand. We could do this in the daytime, daytime as well by using shadows, but that would involve playing a bit more with the sun position, the shadow versus lit uh, contrast and other things. This is really simple to pick up and understand. So, first of all, as soon as I start, I see something behind uh, the first wall of rocks, which attracts my attention. This is a landmark and it's used to give the player the general sense of direction on longer distances. So I'm not trying here to guide the player necessarily on his first decision in decision one or decision two, but more on the entire part of this map, the entire first part of this map. Okay, so there we go. There we go. Again, I, this was basic, I had no decisions here. However, I have here my first decision. You can see it here on the right. I have here a second one, maybe. There we go. But now I can clearly see the landmark. And yes, CTV, especially if you're a scaredy cat and you would take the right because you're afraid of the big boogeyman. Uh, with red lights and everything, uh, you would just end up in a dark and quite claustrophobic room, from which, however, you would see the second uh, boogeyman. So I hope that makes enough sense. Okay, so now let's assume I take the correct path by following the landmark. Here you can see the red lights. Yes, the weenies, exactly. Here you can see the red lights that were also casting uh, light on the gray box version of the level. So here it's pretty basic. I'm just getting the player used to red lights just so he knows they're safe and nothing wrong can happen. So CTV could also play this level and feel okay doing it. Here is the uh, second uh, uh, the second choice where you had the flat wall in front of you and you had to take a left or a right. Again, we'll take the right. We keep on following the lights. There we go. Again, please excuse the low FPS. Um, the multi-choice again, which here, because of the partly dark uh, environment on the further choice from the player, of course, I go on the closest one. I can also see a distant light, which then reinforces the fact that I should go that way. And again, I've switched to 
Can you send us on email this map? Uh, Bogdan, uh, I don't think I can send it on email because it's pretty huge. Um, I think I could possibly put it on a Google Drive or something like that. So going back to the second weenie, the iced weenie. Uh, as you can see, after I've let the player navigate a bit through the lights, you've also seen on the gray box version, I switched back to landmarking as well. Uh, so now as a player, I can get another good bearing of where I have to go. And Al Diab, I'm pretty sure your uh, architecture skills kind of confirm that because I'm pretty sure that's how architects also do it. Okay. I would completely ignore the option I have here on the right. Uh, I'll actually shoot here. So you see there's something there. I don't even care about it. I want to go to the Wii. Okay. Here is again the multi-choice, barely visible, but I have one there, another room here, and another room here. But again, the weenie was supposedly in that direction. I purposely covered it up, so you would follow again the um, uh, lights from the tiny lamp posts, which now have turned white as the weenie. So I am also associating the color of the landmark with the color of the light. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Okay. So now he understands the white stuff is what he should follow. I have another lamp here. I can definitely go through the maze and now look at just by one, of course, uh, Al Diab, uh, about the obstacles uh, and like more complex puzzles, we'll, we will talk in more detail during the level design course. It's actually, uh, you can frustrate them in a lot of ways, uh, even by um, controlling the amount of enemies he has to fight at the same time, the amount of puzzles he has to fix while fighting enemies and the overall difficulty of the enemies you put on screen uh, at a given time. So again, we're back to the triple option. I have something on the left, something forward and something on the right. Now, because I've switched to like the final version of the meshes, I can see already there's good lighting there. If I look up, I can already see the weenie. There we go. So it's already attracting me. And if I would be a player, I would definitely choose this path towards the iced uh, weenie totem instead of going towards darkness and something completely uninteresting. Um, this would be it uh, when talking about lights and landmarks. Now, uh, I didn't put any loot in this uh, level necessarily, but I didn't also put any enemies for that matter. But can you uh, think of ways we usually attract uh, players with loot? And to make it simple and because the... Um, player character is holding a placeholder rifle in his hands. Let's talk about shooters specifically. What's the best way in shooters to attract players with loot? I'm pretty sure um, some of you have the answer already. Some of you other than CTV. Skeletons or cheats? Yes, but talking specifically about loot, about something the player can pick up. What's the most used thing to lure the player in shooters especially? Yes, Artyom. 
exactly so uh, when guiding the player with loot uh, you must or health packs armor exactly so it's basically uh, things of interest to the player and depending on the game depending on the game mechanics you have in there um, it could actually be in the order of priorities for instance in quake if we go uh, to a clear example in quake you would attract me more with armor and weapons than with ammo and health packs so if you want the place to be highly visited by players you just have to put there the quad damage which is like the ultimate pickup if you want the place to be somewhat visited by players you put there an armor let's say a medium one if you want the place to be pretty frequently visited by players but not as disputed as the quad damage you just put a railgun pickup in that location again this is specific to the game you're building and for our course i will give you like the main guidelines if you'd like to use them if not please feel free to make your own uh, just to have priorities uh, but it this also connects um, to the game mechanics uh, webinar we had, the first one we had, where we actually uh, touched on how uh, players think about the game and they interact with the game. It all depends on the flavor of game you're building levels for, or if you want to build the entire game, not just the levels, it depends on the entire flavor of the game you're building. Okay. So, any questions? Oops. Questions? Anyone? The awkward silence uh, means there probably aren't any questions. How is light guidance different in open world games from corridor shooters? Good question, CTV. My 50 cents on it, based on the open world games we've both worked on, or I've... <laughs> um, usually in the open world games, it's much more about the landmark than the lighting they do use uh, lighting here and there a good example would be um, more uh, shadow of mordor or uh, shadow of uh, war um, but i would say the best bet is with landmarks because those really stand out uh, landmarks for large parts of the map uh, lighting for micro situations in level design Yes, uh, very good question, Stefan. Then I would do a mix. I would put the landmarks with the weenie heads where I really want the player to go, but I would put the uh, loot uh, and some of the guiding lights to the parts I want to, I want him to explore. However, uh, there's a very fine line here and I think I can actually show it on the maze let's see so uh, if we look at this maze a bit <clears throat> um, you can see 
uh, for instance, let me put a cube here so you can actually see it. Oops. Sorry. So uh, I'll put a cylinder actually because it's easier to spot. So, my bad. Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. Come on, cylinder. Let me scale this bad boy up a bit. Okay. So, Stefan, it would be fair for me as a level designer to put an ammo pickup where the cylinder is to guide the player that way and maybe give him some more let's duplicate here some more armor or something here let me also switch to unlit so you can see better there we go so i have a tiny room here uh, the player can enter it uh, he can quickly explore it etc however i wouldn't necessarily try to do the same thing with let's say i'll move the cylinders now uh, somewhere around here for instance let me switch back to lit so if I put one here and one I don't know here can you still see the two cylinders now okay so this would be an edge case, a serious edge case and at the location of where the two cylinders are now I would at most put, um, I don't know, maybe a collectible a collectible for which I would really like the player to look for and in which I already know from start not all players will want that collectible because out of let's see um, how many people are we about 20 uh, not all of us want to collect all the additional stuff the cosmetic items etc however most of us need the weapons if it's a shooter need the keys if it's an puzzle adventure game or need the health packs whatever the kind of game it is so if you put only there uh, the health packs in your map as a player I might get a bit frustrated <laughs> okay any more questions A very good uh, question, Artyom. Um, I would use the same kind of light signaling but in a vertical space and if I would be able to, let's say, start real quick. Let's, let's try something really simple. Whatever. Real fast, real simple. So if I would go here, I'll be as quick as possible and sorry if it lags a bit while I do this, but it shouldn't take that long. So for instance, that should be it, that should be it and let's take this. Rotate like this. it's again a very choppy example just to show you that it still works even in highly vertical uh, spaces so bam bam what about games where the objectives dynamically change or when you need to walk through the same place twice does the lighting change dynamically or should sound cues and other methods be used to guide the player uh, very good question. Um, 
again it depends on what you're trying to achieve so if you're just using light signaling to get the player there i would definitely try to change the light for instance i see a blinking light and i try to put it um, connected somehow to uh, i don't know control panel for a door etc when i open the door i shut down that light or switch it from red to green from green to red whatever um, uh, and if i need to i would also actually uh, not necessarily use sound cues i would block the player in another part this way he knows he got to the end of that pocket room there and he would have to uh, return so let me just oops not a spotlight my bad let me just finish with uh, Artyom's question so this would be Artyom a pretty good light signaling on a vertical style gameplay there we go uh, okay this is oops a, very, a really rough example but imagining we have more um, windows or buildings or whatnot just by lighting up the one of interest for the player let's see if i can get it right from the first time One thing you'll uh, hear me talk about a lot during the course is also about uh, building your light or color palettes and association. So for instance, depending on what you're trying to achieve, lure the player or uh, scare the player, build some sort of uh, color code as CTV said. The most common one is uh, red is for baddies, green is for uh, goodies and Artyom let's look at it again Vert completely vertical wall of windows if you'd like I don't know yet what my color code is in this one but let's say red is for baddies green is for goodies it's pretty clear to me exactly where the baddies are and when where the goodies are uh, okay let's say we don't necessarily want to use light all the time because that would be kind of silly and we possibly wouldn't be able to do it like in a complete daylight level where the light is falling directly in that building etc uh, let's go 50 50 and say we'll keep the green light which is for something good if you get in that building at that point you'll get the pickup or something it's your escape point whatever and let's figure out another solution for the uh, for getting rid of the red light so if i'm imagining this is a tower or a building facade i would just go into a bit more effort with my uh, props and art and let's just imagine um, okay like this and like this let's just imagine this part maybe was uh, destroyed somehow so i would just oops i would just do this this oopsie this this i would completely waste this like so like so uh, so like this and like this so now i have this part is destroyed I still forgot the red light there we can remove it no problem and that part is green and good so sorry let me just get rid of this red light and let's look at it again destroyed 
So something happened there, something exploded, something, some fighting went on, who knows? I'm holding a dummy rifle, that's why I'm thinking about shooters right now. Uh, the green stuff, that looks pretty good. The facade is still intact, so I might want to go there. About this part, I don't know if I want to go there or if I want to run away from there. It's still not clear. Again, this is, whoops, uh, this is the associations you will uh, build in your levels in your game. Uh, I'll just show you how to do it, but it's a lot of decision uh, left on your on your behalf because it's your artistic and creative freedom right there. Okay, so, uh, let's see where we are, here. CTV has a great, great question. Uh, what is the balance between hand-holding the player and no guidance at all, which comes after a whole lot of trial and error and feedback? Play test it. Uh, as I've said in the previous webinar about level designers and how they work, uh, as I'm building right now a, a few free YouTube videos I'll upload pretty soon. Uh, it's all about, and I'll actually also write it in the chat, um, set an intention. There we go. Follow through with a lot of testing. So, if as a level designer I set my intention on paper, I make that sketch with the maze and I set my intention next to it, I write a simple phrase. I want the player to spend more than half of his level playtime um, searching around uh, for the proper um, exit for the proper path. Then I would reduce the amount of lights and landmarks. I wouldn't handhold him. But in order to validate my intention, my original objective for the map, I have to do one thing. To start distributing the map to friends, family, colleagues at work or school or university, wherever you are, just ask people to play the map, look at how they play it, literally stay right behind their shoulder, look at how they're playing and you basically verify if you touch on your intention or not. Um, I, as a personal preference to, to punctually answer CTV, I prefer uh, the games where it's a 50-50 balance. The player isn't too well guided, uh, but it's not also like a completely blown up open world where you don't know nothing. Um, I personally, uh, to answer Bogdan's question, if I think that just by adding optional objectives I can make the player explorer level, Bogdan, I personally uh, don't don't ni don't necessarily like uh, to breadcrumb the player with objectives. I prefer the gameplay to be more organic, to either signal with lights, landmarks or loot, and to keep the objectives as minimal and as clean as possible. Uh, yeah, CTV. When playtesting, you also have to tell them they're silly and they don't know how to play the game. Just kidding, that's level design sarcasm right there. So Bogdan, I hope that answers your question. Uh, I personally don't prefer to always have that uh, objective point on the map, go there, go there, go there. <laughs> but there are some that like that, both designers and players. So again, it's just a matter of taste and personal opinion. Uh, I won't uh, structure the level design course on that. So it won't be about how to set an objective marker after another to babysit the player and handhold him and breadcrumb him to the end of the level. <laughs> uh, luckily, I didn't work on Assassin's Creed 
uh, although I did work for quite a long time at uh, Ubisoft, I think CTV has worked on Assassin's Creed. Aldiab mentions it would be interesting to have a level designer made a game level, uh, make a game level boss. Yeah, so CTV had four years on Assassin's Creed. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, there are a lot of bosses made by level designers, um, other than maybe some specs uh, from. Um, um, the game designers, I don't think the implementation is done ever by the game designer. It's mostly level designers. And uh, uh, Al Diab, if you want a good level design boss uh, made definitely by a level designer, I recommend the first uh, Batman game. Uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, the Scarecrow uh, mini-boss. Uh, it's amazing, I recommend you play it, you love what they did there with the level around the boss. You're welcome, my Diab. So, uh, CTV is uh, spilling industry secrets on this live webinar. I just can't wait to upload it to YouTube. <laughs> but uh, yes, sometimes, uh, as uh, Bogdan asked about the micro objective and micro management, uh, Assassin's Creed does that, as CTV said. Um, uh, although I haven't worked with them, I can tell by the games I'm playing from them. Activision with Call of Duty does that. Uh, a lot of micromanagement there too, uh, just uh, waypoint after waypoint after objective after sub-objective. Uh, the level of uh, micromanagement is so annoying uh, in those moments where you find a door that needs a keycard and you get an objective to get the keycard, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, I'll give you that. If the keycard is far, far away from that door, like in the other part of the map, okay, you need to do that. But if it's like right next to the door and you just switch my objective as a player for 0 0.3 seconds, it's not worth it anymore. And yes, I should also play Origins. I didn't get to play it yet, but uh, Irina also wants to play it, so we'll probably uh, get it and play it soon. Okay, so as we are coming uh, to an end, uh, by the way, can you guys click the banner uh, where it says uh, Learn Level Design uh, course? That should now take you to the YouTube channel, if I got the linking right. And if you subscribe to that channel, uh, you'll see everything I upload about level design there. I'll also upload this webinar because I fortunately pressed the record button, I hope. Uh, if not, then we'll just redo this webinar anyway, so we'll have something to post there. Uh, the maze map on Google Drive or something else? Yes, I will upload it on Dropbox or whatever. Uh, Bogdan, on your side, you will need to download a few asset packs which are free from the um, Epic uh, Marketplace. I'll send you an email with the instructions and everything. Thank you to Stefan. Uh, so, uh, the surprise. As usual, uh, these are the perks uh, only for webinar attendance. As you know, we have the Indiegogo campaign. However, uh, I discount heavily on the perks from Indiegogo only for the webinar attendance. You will get the links in... Uh, you're welcome, Bogdan. You will get the links in um, uh, the follow-up email for the two perks. But if you really, really want one of those uh, perks, um, shout it out here in the chat. And I'll try to send it via uh, message, not in the public chat. Maybe that's 
a way to make it work in the webinar software. So the first one is a discount for the power user perk. Uh, you will get lifetime access to the course, your name in the credits, uh, also access uh, to the Discord channel. We'll be starting first or 2nd of April, immediately after Easter. Um, we'll have the Discord open before we launch the course. So the course will start on 1st of May. Uh, however, the Discord goes live one month before uh, the course starts. We'll have previews there of the course content, we'll talk about the topics, we'll try to understand what you need the most inside the course and the way we need to structure the videos, the information, etc. And hopefully we'll have great <laughs> links to great videos from the get-go. Um, there is also the private tutor perk. Uh, if any one of you attendants uh, except CTV <laughs> is interested in having a dedicated tutorial program one-on-one uh, -on -one with me 45 minutes per week for eight weeks not necessarily in a row uh, to work the course um, as you go through the course we can uh, I can challenge you I can offer you extra assistance and you can build your own version your own intention and your own maps uh, we also have the private tutor perk at a massive discount. For this one, I cannot offer more than four uh, spots at this massive discount because it's something about the hourly uh, fee, if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> yes, CTV. I, I guess we also we are already taking 45 minutes each day to look at each other. Uh, by the way, uh, I'm also following CTV on his Twitch adventures, um, and I've actually linked to CTV's channel in the YouTube video for the first webinar. So. Um, that should be uh, the private tutor perk. If anyone is interested and wants to work directly with me on their own levels, proposals and the course structure, please don't hesitate to uh, grab this perk. Um, we are also considering extending the Indiegogo campaign for uh, extra two or three weeks. However, uh, we will already start the Discord channel 1st or 2nd of April, immediately after Easter. Uh, and we have already started to work on the actual course content. So no worries about that. The level design course will happen no matter what. I'm just trying to finance honestly a second processor so I can compile final lighting for complex levels which I could then upload on YouTube and for the course. But we'll get there, no worries. Um, okay, um, so it, does anyone want the perk link now? Someone please say yes, so I could at least test the linking through the message thing on this. <laughs> Probably CTV will say yes pretty soon. <laughs> Let me just test. Okay, so uh, I'm testing the link now in a private message. So please don't hesitate. If you want the perks, uh, just ask for them. I'll also send them in the follow-up email. Now for the moment of truth, I will pause the recording just to check we are actually uh, recording. Fingers crossed. And 
see you guys on the next one have a great evening and thanks for attending uh, we'll talk next week about how to build a challenge matrix for the player which is actually uh, a very complicated but necessary way level designers uh, scale the difficulty of each level in their progression uh, if we're talking about a single player game or the way level designers control the difficulty around the game world if we're talking about an open world large map so thank you once again for attending see you next week have a great one see you soon